Hello humans, this is Random Visage and welcome to the Random Channel. Today we're going to be playing a new game. This is called Untold. Uh, you know, I was uh, thinking of... Um, what's up with this? I was playing Medieval Fantasy again, so... I was like, you know, might as well look for some other um, different type, varying types of, uh, you know, games with uh, uh, this reading type of concept. So I found this one. Um, apparently it's a demo, but we'll see. If it's good, I, I'll get the full version, depending. Washed ashore, you have only vague recollections of what happened. The past seems unimportant now. Shivering, you watch the bodies float along the debris. No ships can be seen on the horizon. The audio should be on. Can I hear anything? No, I can't hear anything. What the fuck? Isn't it supposed to be audio? Yeah, it says there's audio. What the fuck is this? Uh, there's an auto save, but might as well. I have no idea why the audio is not coming out, as there even is an audio, but we'll see. So we are washed ashore on a beach. Um, there's, there's, there's bodies around me, and there's no ship on the horizon. So okay, explore the beach. There's nothing here but sand and gravel, or so it may seem. You feel a painful sensation in your left foot, causing you to take a step backwards. Glimmering in the sun, a sharp object is revealed. Examine the object. At first, you are unable to make sense of it. You pick it up uh, to get a closer look. It's a large oval-shaped silver brooch. Uh, is it called a brooch or a brooch? I think it's called a brooch. Um, the kind that people use to fasten their cloaks. Uh, something about the unusual design seems familiar. Apparently it's some... Um, <coughs> could be some... You know... I think bro bro uh, brooches were used... Brooches, whatever they're called. Were used by nobility for the most part. Or knights, perhaps. I didn't even read what I type, uh, tabbed. A uh, voice echoes in your mind. It's a stingray, apparently, sculpted in the center. The exotic sea creature evokes memories of turmoil and suffering. There was a ship, a caravel, was approaching. The stingray was embellished across the dark sails. Strangely, your memories seems garbled and distant. So I'm guessing we were on a ship and we got attacked by pirates, with the, which had stingray brooches on them. I don't know. I have never heard of pirates wearing brooches, but okay. But the silver brooch in your pocket or brooch whatever it's called man i don't fucking know i, I found i feel dumb not knowing that but okay you hide the silver brooch within the folds of a tattered rags tears come to your eyes you're overwhel overwhelmed by a feeling of relief gratitude and confusion merely moving the symbol out of sight produced such an intense emotional reaction how could it be what could these pe people possibly have done to you continue exploring the beach Discover footprints in the sand leading north. It's late in the afternoon. If there's another survivor out there, you should find this person before it gets dark. So here's where uh, this this weird thing comes in. Uh, this is our quest inventory. I can hear something now. Wait, hold on. Is there music? It's very light, but I can certainly hear music. Okay, I hear. I can hear it now. So this there's a mission shipwrecked. Uh, you have been brand. You have been stranded on a desolate island. Find the other survivor. It seems like someone else has survived. Follow the footprints to investigate. So we could do this one. Can I mark this? I cannot mark this as a main quest or whatever. Uh, but it's a, it's a quest. You have on a beach. A uh, silver brooch was buried in the sand. Uh, yeah, yeah, I already read all that. Find out the find out what the symbol means. What is the significance of the stingray? Hopefully, someone knows more about the symbol and what it represents. This is our character. You currently don't have any gear equipped that provides you with combat action. Wait, so without gear I just have no combat abilities? <coughs> I mean I can, you know, punch at least. Or is that just not an option? Are we like outlast or something? Uh, you discover for yeah, yeah, already, right? I think we should... Why would I study the footprints? It's... I guess to get an idea if it's a male or a female or something like that. That could be a slight advantage, but... I'm not gonna go exploring uh, until unless I get to the bottom of these footprints. Study. Uh, they're somewhat small and delicate. You arrive at the conclusion they were made by a person below average height walking barefoot. So it could be a child or a midget or, you know, just, I guess, a small person. Like uh, someone with like five feet height or something. I mean, that, that wouldn't count as a dwarf or whatever. But okay. This, this small and delicate, what does that mean? It sounds like a child. Let's follow the footprints then. Something near the water has caught your attention, prompting you to take a quick look. 
Closer scrutiny uh, reveals a rusty knife, which hardly, while hardly ideal, while hardly ideal, is better than nothing. Take the knife and move on. I think I'll take the knife. I think it would be helpful. That's a nice scenery. Further north, the beach gives way to a flourishing wetland. You discover a lagoon surrounded by red pines. At this point, there are no more footprints. That's a problem. So we went from the beach to a wetland. I guess a swamp. I guess that makes sense. In a, in a lagoon, you wouldn't really, you know, find... Um, That's some interesting music. Okay. Discover a, a lagoon surrounded by red pines. At this point, there are no more footprints. I guess it's a swamp that would make sense. What is this? I think this is the map. Yeah, it's the map. So I can use this to go here and there. Take a look around. The lagoon is encircled by reeds, thick like palisades. You find a conspicuous opening near the shallows. Open the lagoon. Explore the lagoon. <laughs> I thought open the lagoon. I was like, what am I, a cultivator? Uh, explore the lagoon. Cross the shallows. Why would I explore the lagoon? What do you want me to do? Just go in and just like uh, touch around to see if there's anything underneath the water? There's an opening near the shallows. I guess I could go to the... I guess I'll explore it. Might as well. Lagoon is littered with dead bodies. It's getting loud. The dr uh, hopefully it's not too loud that you can't hear me or whatever. The lagoon is littered with lead dead bodies and driftwood. A few crates and barrels are floating around. New arrivals from the shipwreck caravel just like you. Time and time again, you tremble at the sight of the stingray as each container has been marked with the same resp repulsive symbol. Uh, I guess I'll examine the corpses. Far too numerous, bloated beyond recognition. The dead bodies might as well be left undisturbed. Try to salvage something useful. Knee deep in water, you pry open the floating crates, hoping to discover something useful. For a after a while, you grow weary. Having found a few things worth keeping, you decide to call it quits. What did I get? Rusty bread knife. Didn't I already have it? I got it equipped, apparently. Uh, this thing? Black toga. Perfect for southern regions of Temkiris. <coughs> get some armor and umprints. Uncumbrance. So I think uh, our armor actually weighs us down in this one. What is this? Leather boots. Get 250 protection? Jeez. That's fucking good. I guess some... These are really heavy, apparently. These are leather boots, leather boots but they're really heavy. Three comprints. Interesting. So we still don't have any combat abilities, even though we do have a rusty dagger. I guess that doesn't really count that much. Alright. Cross the shallows. Something's moving along the reeds on the other side. A wild dog emerges, growling and run towards you across the shallows. Fight. Let's see what the combat is like. What is this? Oh, I just keep tapping this until I hit kill him. That's interesting. That's mm, I didn't think that would be I thought it would be like turn based, but okay. So I'm guessing later in the game they're going to be like there's going to be multiple attack options depending on what weapons we have like a shield bash or like a sword swing or like stab and we have to choose between them as the reload uh, to get the maximum efficiency you know you have to chain the attacks or whatever I'm not too good at chaining attacks but you know uh, it is what it is whimpering the dog or the wild dog collapses slowly the carcass starts to drift into the lagoon cross the shallows there's a hut it would seem these are really pretty images, like, uh, who's ever drew these, uh, great, did a great job. I mean, these look like oil paintings, uh, really good. I haven't seen an oil painting in, like, a long time, apparently, just... I, I think I made one back in the day, but, you know, I don't remember much. Tucked away in lush vegetation, a small shack lies in the outskirts of a deep forest. You discover a fresh set of footprints on a dirt path nearby, leading into the northern forest. Study the footprints. Let's study the footprints. They match the footprints from the beach, as far as you can tell. I think I should check the shack, but it could be, they could be dangerous. They could be like, you know, it's our shack, what the fuck, bro. What would I do in a situation like that? I don't think I would go for the shack. I would probably follow the footprints. So I'm gonna follow the footprints. Well, it's, it is dangerous. I mean, if I break into the shaft, they're gonna like, whoa, you know. Uh, you know, you could be, you know, like trying to steal my stuff or something like that. You know how... Uh, in dangerous, uh, you know, in a stressful situation, people get hostile without any, you know, real reason. Crossing a bridge over a stream, you realize that you are being watched. Armed with spear, two women observe you from a distance. They are dressed in green cloaks and blue tunics. Shortly after you spotted them, it's like they swiftly move out of sight. So it was a woman. 
Oh, this is not a welcoming sight. I mean, I don't think I, yeah, I probably turn back. I don't think I can uh, go head to head with them. Neither do I want to interact, honestly. It's a good thing they didn't come after me. I would probably run. Uh, you walk all the way back to the southern outskirts of the forest. As far as you can tell, there's no one following. You go back to the old shack. I guess I'll, yes, there's no option here, so I, I'll just approach the shack. Unfortunately, rather than fighting women with fucking spears, the warrior shit, like, uh, holy shit, I don't think I, I, my character has any combat capabilities. I somehow managed to kill a dog, but I don't think, I, I do believe those girls would be much difficult than a fucking dog. I'll probably die like a dog if I try to fight them. Uh, not just talking about their fucking, uh, you know, physical capabilities and not talking about their armors and whatever, weaponry. I'm talking about, like, you know, they're soldiers, so they must, like, know how to fight. And I don't think my character knows much about fighting, probably. We didn't really give any hint about that. The front door has been uh, left slightly ajar, partially broken. It may have been opened by force. At a shack. Uh, someone has been here quite recently. A pile of bloody bandages have been discarded on the work table in front of you. There's also a hunting knife on the table along with a pouch of assorted food rations facing a northern forest. There's a small window next to the ladder. Hmm. I don't think it's a good idea to take any of this stuff because, you know, they could come after me. Uh, and I don't think I need it at the moment. So we'll hold off on that. Peer through the window first. We catch a glimpse of a strange individual dressed in green cloak and armed with spear. The young man disappears into the forest. Oh great, they are following me. I'm gonna climb the ladder. There's a loft up here covered by dust and cobwebs. An old book lies next to a moldy mattress. Grab the book. Aside from the moldy mattress, the loft is empty. It's called, what is it called? There's a silver brooch, a large silver brooch setting a sculpted stingray encapsulated by a wealth of amethyst. The mere sight of this object fills you with dread and disgust. The music in this one is really interesting. I mean, uh, technically, uh, let me just be clear, fucking uh, medieval fantasy also has music, but it's like very slight. And it doesn't like play as you play the game, it like plays when you click an option or something, it's like achievement unlock, boom. It generally does that instead of like setting an ambiance with this. So a dusty old book, Factum General, Factum's General. So Factum, some guy, I guess. Uh, third Moon, three ninety eight. Oh, their calendar is three ninety eight. So so after they set up a proper calendar, I'm guessing uh, when they decided to set up a proper calendar, it's just been about four hundred years. So the civilization is not that old. I mean, I guess it's old, but it's nowhere near ours. We have like 1700 difference between us and them, 1600. Not, not a violent sword, not me, but Mapo. He pissed me off again, more than ever, before me thinks. What is this talk? Uh, anyways, not thinking. Dumb enough to make a man dream? How I put the mallet in his head, see what pops out. Not me though. Took a deep breath as one does. What else? Put the mallet in his head? No. Praise ye. Fenris, pop open a noble's noggin, you'll soon hang, and for what? Nothing, that's what. Pox on those nobles. Uh, I can somehow understand this for some reason. And anywho, uh, that must be anyhow. What happened was they put me to work from top to bottom. Do this, do that, now this and then that. Fair enough. But then Maple yip yapping like the little silver spoon sucking precious duckling. <laughs> yes. About the bedrock and capstone, how nobles descend from the great wolf, the rest of us deluded, like Panasian, Panasian beer, and heard it all before, no matter, but then it gets worse, foolish maple, always not thinking, such yammering about the foul green cloaks, says green cloaks are the most purebred of all, heads full of secret, says we got it all wrong, a uh, gobbledy gook goes on like that, but I don't listen. Blood boiling, deep breath, raised my voice, told him what they did to my family, made it very clear, wouldn't listen so. I raised my voice some more. So he sent me home, no pay, says I should know my place, should have put the mallet to his head. So I'm guessing um, the fucking uh, either. I'm, I'm, I don't think they're a hostile tribe, but they would have attacked me immediately. I'm guessing just, you know, when you invade the territory or go, to, go towards the territory, they get hostile. Um, which, I guess, makes sense. Not the best course of action when you're trying to have a, you know, discussion, but okay. 
This place reeks of mold and ancient dust. It looks like no one is like living here, so I guess I'll take the food. I got some food and I got some hunting knife. Hunting knife's good. Bronze hunting knife. I think this stuff is old because you know the the general was pretty damn old until unless the fucking noble Mapo is still living here. And that could be a problem if that's the case. So let's grab this. Can I can I destroy this? No. I can equip this. And eat this stuff. I guess that what does that do? Restore a small amount of health. Small amount of health? Restore a small amount of health. See how much health does it restore? A very little amount. Uh yeah, one health apparently. This say my health like twenty four or twenty four, okay. I'm guessing it just only does like about two or three uh, points of health. Um, yeah, I, I'm guessing, but it says one. I guess it's one. We'll have to see that. Uh, let's go outside. When you open the door, you notice a wild dog lurking outside. It's growling. It keeps its distance, perhaps anticipating your next move. Yeah, that could be an issue. I'm guessing, I don't think it's a relative of the last dog, but you know, um, who really knows how this will go. But we'll see. What is that hitting sound? What is that? I guess that's just the music. But it feels like something is like hitting something. Like bam. 3, 3, 6, 7, 8. Okay. 9, 10. <laughs> I'm not counting something. I'm just doing something else at the same time. Um, I don't think... Yeah, yeah, Ignore the dog and walk away. I don't think that would work. But that's a difficult... I don't think I should put my back towards it. I mean, I mean, hold on. Like, is it is it guarding the shack? Is it like is it like the owner's dog who's ever lived here, or is it like completely separate situation from that? Because if that's the case, that's a. I don't know if I, what should I do. I don't want to get into a fight. I should ignore the dog and walk away. I think it could be someone else's dog, and they could get really angry that I killed their dog. Which would make sense, so let's ignore the dog and walk away. Barking incessantly, the animal seems perplexed by your indifference. After a while, it scurries off into the wilderness. Good job. Uh, that was a good decision. Move on. You stand near the small shack on the outskirts of the northern forest. There is no one else around. A set of footprints are visible in the forest path. So I could follow the footprints again. And this time go forward. But I'm going to take a look behind the shack. There's an old grave behind the shack marked by a simple wooden tool, wooden board. Simple wooden board, okay. Uh, what does this say though? Look at the grave marker. So it's a grave made out of wood? I mean, the, the, the gravestone is made of wood? Slightly askew. Askew? Askew? I think it means just tilted? I don't know. Um, the, the wooden grave marker is surrounded by weeds and sunflower. The inscription are no longer legible. Leave it alone. I think what I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Hmm... What? I... They just l left all my options. I tried to go towards the br bridge to cross the fucking bridge where the women were. I didn't think they would just like... Didn't just take away my option to back out. That's fucked up. I might just die here. If I do, I do apologize already. Cross the bridge. Seemingly without end, the winding path takes you deep into the forest. The pines are now enveloped by the shimmering light of golden dusk. Smoke is rising from a campfire in the distance. Approach the camp. This might be bad, but we'll see. There's, a, there's blood all over the place. A wounded man lies on his back near the campfire. He's dressed in green cloak, just like the other forest dweller. I think I'm gonna examine his wounds. With numerous cuts and stabs and uh, stabs and wounds across his entire body, it seems unlikely that the person will survive much longer. Nothing sort of miracle, nothing short of a miracle would save him, which I guess makes sense in this uh, dilapidated place. There's not much supplies. But did, I, did, I think I did find some old bandages, but I don't. I'm not too sure. I mean, there could be old bandages useful, but I mean, it's old bandages, and if they're cut all over the place, one bandage is not gonna do it. It's not like you know most games you just fucking put a single b piece of bandage on your hand and bullet wounds just start just disappear uh, that's not the case here unfortunately that would be the case uh, I would do that but you know I talk too much sometimes and it's unnecessary talk sometimes too <laughs> oh man okay 
Put him out of his misery. R rifle through his pockets. Look at his face. I think I'm gonna talk to him or whatever I can do. Look at his face. Below the green hood, his f face is covered by a grotesque wolf mask. Remove the mask. Despite slipping in and out of consciousness, the wounded man struggles to resist. You manage to remove the wolf mask, revealing a skinless face. Apparently, the mask had been stitched and grafted onto the upper half, permanently replacing most of his ill-fated visage. If nothing else, it boggles the mind. Uh, put him out of his misery? Hardly a difficult task unless you are a, the squeamish type. Rather than delving into the ethics of mercy, you apply the logic of a sharp blade. In the least metaphorical way possible, you watch him die, knowing the blood from the severed arteries will reach the intended location, granting him a reasonable swift, swift demise. What, 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 what? Knowing that the blood from the severed arteries will reach the intended location, uh, granting him a swift, a reasonable and swift demise. I thought we would get an option to how do I want to kill him? Like, uh, you know, uh, do we cut here? Do we cut here? And they would like to you know, try to uh, examine the player's uh, medical expertise i guess i guess that, that's too much to ask for you know uh, it could be a very difficult situation or oh, whatever hmm uh, let's rifle through his pockets you find a strange key made from iron its angular design is adorned with the number eight it's unusually heavy angular design i'm not sure what that is i think it's it means like plus i guess or it like has keys on both sides of the front part i'm not too sure the camp has been plundered already it seems however you find a small book inside the camp there's also some leftover meat in a cast iron skillet i, I just realized did we just when we ripped off the mask would it pain him i mean it was stitched to his face i think um there's also some leftover meat in a cast iron skillet on the ground near the fireplace Okay, let's take the book. Grab the small book from the tent. Take the food. We're still following the footprints. Didn't they disappear after the swamp? Um, you grab the leftovers from the cast iron skillet. The meat has been cooked properly, but it seems to be of dubious origin. <laughs> All right, I guess I won't eat. The, uh, I won't eat it just yet. I got this thing equipped. I guess the the dotted ones are equipped ones. It's dog steak. Charred flesh of a wild mongrel restores the last uh, small amount of health. I guess mongrels are dogs. I, I feel like hyenas are also dogs, but you know, whatever. Iron key. A heavy iron key. You find it along the possession of a dying forest dweller. Small book. A, a leather bound book. It covers, it covers soiled by dirt and damaged by water. Read. Var Fenray's Pilgrimage, 11th Moon, 436. Regretfully, I am preparing for my departure from Earthenfall Grove, 1st Moon, uh, 437. Today I shall embark on my pilgrimage around the four corners of Tem Chris, 3rd Moon, 437. The Malachite uh, lowlands are treacherous. Many have sought to enslave me. Such ill-fated ambitions. Wait, wait, wait. So why would they try to enslave him? Uh, so the blue, the blue headed, uh, the blue tunic, the blue and green tunic tribe. I'm guessing they are in a situation where like the nobles are trying to capture them and enslave them under them. Like, you know, it's my rule type situation. Could be the case. We'll see. Hmm. Such infinite ambitions. The sanctuary of Abidon is nothing more than a desert ruin po populated by opium fiends sixth moon the, the the mountain lion of karnak are fierce i had no choice but to escape okay um a nomad uprising is taking place in the Fe uh, fenris woodlands uh so they're they're a type of nomad a nomadic tribe interesting bravely resisting the occupying forces of Ro roberg militia so militia is attacking them I'm guessing from some like baron or something. A new city has risen. I chanced upon it as I roamed the lawless marshlands of Iblis. Watching the city from afar, I felt no desire to approach. The dream spire is beautiful. Saddens me that it has fallen into the enemy's hand. Soon the apostles of woe will have pity on me. What the fuck is this? Weird. <laughs> I just saw something out of the corner of my eye. I'm getting fucking delusioned or something like 
uh, I, I always, whenever I sit down to record, I always feel like I <laughs> saw something, but it's nothing there. Um, you know, I don't believe in ghosts and stupid shit like that, so I don't make a huge scene out of it. It's just uh, my mind tricking, playing tricks and all that. Dreamspire is beautiful. It saddens me that it has fallen into enemy hands. So the Apostles of Woe will pay for their crimes. Apostle of Woe. I think that's the name the nomadic tribe gave to the uh, Baron's men. Not far from home, I was approached by a representative from the Sorority of Nerva. Sorority, sorority of Nerva. They informed me that all five lodges must gather on the Isle of Dusk. Despite my homesickness, I, have no ch I had no choice but to comply. Journey to the island was uneventful. The Dusk Megalith is a glorious sight to behold. The Apostles of Woe have amassed a great army on the plains of Godhead. Odeya insists that I must learn the hieroglyphics. The Cypher Stone bores me. I'd rather be hunting. All right, that is very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I think I'm gonna end it there. Yeah, this was a very nice uh, change of pace from you know medieval fantasy, which is just like every single thing turns into dark fantasy. Every single thing is a problem. Then <laughs> you can't relax. I can relax while playing this a little bit, not too much, but a little bit. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. There's a link in the description to my Twitter. There's also a link to my Patreon. You can go check my entire list plays out. Also, if you want um, more of this, do comment in the comment section and like the video. I will, uh, I will certainly make more. I'm going to make more anyway, but still, you know, I gotta do the YouTuber thing. Uh, bye.